Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my studio. So we're in the middle of the week here. I'm out here all alone. I'm going to make an effort to put a video together for you because we um, are excited about a new topic and I'm all, you know, got my own studio to myself today, which is kind of unusual and kind of fun. So I'm out here going to try to put this video together for us. So forgive me if our filming is a little crazy. It's all on me. All on me. So anyway, uh, recently this topic came up, shading. How to create shading in your fused glass. And, you know, um, different ways an artist would shade things that make it more creative and richer and not so stark. So your go-to for shading is pretty much always going to be black. You're going to say, oh, black is the go-to, the, the, you know, covers all different perspectives and angles and will give me the results I want with a real nice dark shadow. But the truth is, if you can avoid using black and instead use a really dark color, your artwork will look a lot richer and um, deeper. Because black creates a visual hole, while a color, a dark color, creates a velvety deepness that will enhance your work and cause the viewer's eye to move around the piece instead of getting sucked into that black hole wherein the glass is black. So, I've got a bunch of different examples here that I pulled out that I want to show you and give you kind of a rundown of why, how I did it, what I did, and why I did it, and why you might want to do the same in your new pieces. All right, this piece is Woodland Landscape from my membership video. And this has these beautiful trees. I'll bring it up closer for you. Beautiful trees and shrubbery and greenery from the tree limbs and everything. Um, but what I want you to notice is right in here, you know, this area right here, the really, really dark color, I'm going to bring that in really close for you, the really dark color and those details are not black. They're deep green and a venturing blue. I'll bring this down a little bit more so you can see all those beautiful colors in there. The only black in this entire project are those little details right here on the tree trunks and those are done with glass line outlining medium. The material they use it's kind of like paint where you put it on it dries and it gives you a nice crisp detail smaller than if you were to cut your own glass and if you don't have a glass that has that kind of detail in it it works great. So what I want to point out here is that in the, there's a bunch of deep shadows here. Let me bring that closer again for you. There we go. Look at all those beautiful deep shadows but there's no black. No, those shadows are made with blue, they're made with green, and you get a beautiful luster there that then makes your artwork more interesting. And who doesn't love more interesting, right? So keep in mind, next time you're working on something, instead of going to black as your go-to, pick, say you're using, well, let's go to another example. How about that? All right. Here, I'm coming back. Here we go. Okay, take this pumpkin, for example. This was one of my recent um, YouTube videos. Ooh, I'm trying to make sure I don't get glare on there for you. But look at the shading on here. So the pumpkin is marigold yellow, and the shading is opal orange frit, opal orange powder frit. So this is kind of tricky, actually, videoing yourself and, uh, and getting myself and the artwork in there. So thanks for uh, bearing with me while I do this. But anyway, here we are out in the studio getting this done. And I tell you what, at this moment right now, ooh, I got to do this way. It's like looking in a mirror, but weird. Uh, and at this moment right now, I really miss Nikki. I wish she were here to be behind this camera. But anyway, we're going to move on. That's okay. Anyway, getting to the point. So, marigold yellow for the pumpkin. Okay, the shading is opal orange frit, powder form. And look how that gives it nice shading, and it gives you a really pretty color, and um, transforms that pumpkin, giving you the subtleties without using black. So now I could have used a red, which I actually did. So let me pull that one up for you. So I'll be right back. Got to go over here and get it. All right. So this one, I used red for the shading. And I thought to myself, ooh, that's a little craziness. It's a little bright. And it is, it's definitely pushing, you know, your colors. And it's definitely doing something a little different, which is fabulous. Uh, but, um, you know, in the end... Okay, I gotta go this way. This is so strange. <laughs> hey, you know what? If you are make, out there making fun of me, you try it. You give yourself, get yourself behind the camera and have all this stuff and try videoing at the same time. It's just ridiculous. Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta go like that. Um, anyway, here I am, back into the video camera. So, let me move back a little bit. 
But anyway, here. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting the hang of this. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There we go. All right, look. See all that red? And how that red really differentiates and details those pieces, but it's a little bit stark. But um, it's still an improvement because it's in the same, it's an improvement over black because it's in the same color family and it gives you shading without being so stark. So, great solution. All right, live, love, create. That's what the shirt we're wearing today. So we're finally having some fall weather here. I can't say it's cool, but I can say it was cool enough for me to wear a t-shirt. And anyway, so this project, uh, this is from my, um, let's see, what is it? Oh gosh. Simple Pleasures. Yeah, I have quite a few videos and quite a few pieces. Not always sure which one they're from. This is from Simple Pleasures, and it's one of the projects in there, and it's a wine glass with a vineyard behind it. So I will always suggest, if you can, whatever your subject matter is, in this case, it's the wine glass, what can you do behind that wine glass for a background that will enhance it and make it more beautiful and really give it a setting? So let me bring this closer for you. All right, we're going to, we got this worked out. Okay, there we go. All right, here we are. Ooh, all right, I'm just going to put it right smack in the front there for you. Look at the, um, the details in the vineyard. See those lines that I created that go back and create shading and a sense of depth and a sense of direction and a sense of landscape. Those details are made with aventuring blue. And then the shading in the sky, a couple different shades of blue. Notice the border is purple, not black. So there's no black in this piece, which is really very effective. And it gives you a beautiful piece of art without having that starkness. It gives you that warmth and that um, richness that takes it a level above, you know, uh, you know, entry level artists. So you got this. I know you got this. You got this. Um, so anyway, so start trying to use different combinations or different solutions for your shading instead of just going to black. I try to use black minimally. I use it the least amount possible and I use it very, very purposely. So let's pull out another piece. This is so fun. All right. Here I am. Okay, so this is also from Simple Pleasures. This is a little wine cup. I'm sorry, this is not a wine cup. This is a coffee cup, which I could probably use some coffee right now. All right, check this out. Do you see the shading down here underneath the cup? All right, no black. There's no black in this piece with the exception of the outline around the dichroic. All the other colors were creating shadow and depth and a sense of richness just by changing our colors. So you can do the same. You know, so try to step away from, you know, just going to black as your solution and try using different, you know, scenarios. All right, let's pull out another one. Okay, I've got to step over here because it's a little further away. Be right back. All right, this beautiful piece. Oh, I've got to find out where it goes. Here we are. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, there we go. This is a parrotfish. There, I think I'm getting it. So I have these glasses that are like bifocal. And in order to see, I kind of have to go like this. So if you see me doing that, that's what's happening here. And I don't know, we may end up just deleting this entire video because it's a little crazy, me being out here all by myself. I love it. I love being out here by myself. But is this effective? Are you getting the information? I think so. I think so. I'm having a good time. Hope you are. All right. Yeah. It's crazy, right? All right. Here I am holding it. All right. So this piece has a lot of pretty colors in it. The only black, let me see, the only black in this whole piece is the center of the fish's eye. Bring that closer for you. I don't get, get see there's no glare. Oh boy, look at that. And see that, that pretty detail there on the bottom? And this is so lush and so pretty with that shine. All right, so that detail on the bottom, there's a red, an orange coral with red details on it. And then behind that is a, a navy blue. And the navy blue is creating a sense of depth that there's some distance behind this fish and then there's the open water behind it and then there's this coral this fin kind of finger coral up here with little the tips are a dark purple instead of a black and then I detailed the fish with some different shades of frit and different sizes of frit so here again um, we're creating a sense of depth a sense in this scene a sense of stacking some design elements in front of others creating you know some uh, perspective which is always exciting in art we're creating perspective but we're doing it with color and the color is adds to your design. So the navy blue, so navy blue, dark green, uh, dark purple, dark amber, dark um, blue. Uh, I said blue already, but uh, adventuring blue is actually one of my favorite shading glasses. Um, glasses for creating dark shades. 
shadows. And so try, you know, uh, if you know, pulling out a color you already have in your art and repeating it in a much deeper shade. Now, if you don't have a deeper shade, combine some colors to make something dark, make a little something muddy. Uh, you know, usually we're trying to avoid making muddy, but in this case, muddy is your friend. All right, I have uh, three more pieces I wanna show you. All right, this is a lantern with a fall leaf on t in the front. It's a ready-made uh, five-inch glass candle shelter with, I glued nuggets on the outside. And I made this fall leaf and I shaded it, made some of these details with greens and ambers. Let's see, where are we gonna go with that? There we are. Uh, with greens and ambers to give it some depth to, you know, variation from that bright yellow, from that bright orange, and to give it a sense of, um, you know, um, gradual color change, gradient, painterly quality, all those things we're doing with the frit, but we're using different colors, deep, deep colors, to do that, to achieve that goal. So exciting stuff. All right, I'm gonna put this one down and get another one. All right, that, I'm gonna come back, come back up. All right, this one is really exciting. I don't know how I'm gonna even share it with you. Check this out. Whoa, all right, let me find which way it goes. It goes like this. All right, this is the octopus tray. I'm gonna put it over here, okay. Maybe over here. All right, there we go. Ooh, how can we do this? All right, hold on, I don't know where to go. All right, there we are, all right. This is the octopus tray. I'm sorry, it's getting pretty hot out here. The octopus tray from my video membership. And it's high contrast colors, really pretty colors. And we wanted to create a sense, or I wanted to create a sense that the, some of these tentacles were behind the octopus's body and some tentacles were behind each other. And how do you do that? You do that with shading. And I just seem to be gravitating to this location because I guess it's comfortable here and I'm not gonna back into anything. So I guess this is where I'm gonna hang out. Uh, I'm gonna try to make sure there's less glare on this. There we go. All right, so, and there we go. Nope, there's glare there, all right. This is pretty tricky. So I'm gonna add this to my resume, filming myself, giving a tutorial. There we go. All right, um, so this one has really high contrast, co contrast colors, the blue and the oranges, but now I'm gonna bring it closer and show you, I want you to look at the depth of the shading where the octopus's tentacles come in contact with the body and where the tentacles, some go behind the others that shading is done with dark red. Dark red and maroon and opal red. There's no black. The only black in this project is that one little detail on the octopus's eye. But all that beautiful shading, oh, let's see, there's a lot of glare here. Uh, there, you, you can see it right there, oh yeah. All right, there's a lot of um, detail here created with just that dark red. You can see it there when I turn it with a strict angle. Let me try this angle here. Oh, there we go. Now we're getting it. Ooh, finally. Okay, you see that shading there? Isn't that just spectacular? That's such a great example of shading and getting a real nice sense of depth. And look how warm that is and how that really actually highlights and enhances the design because it's a, a color, a version of the colors already in your subject matter. So really exciting stuff. So you'll learn how to do this kind of shading in the video, in the octopus video that I have with my membership. So consider joining. Anyway, if you're not already a member, if you're a member, you're awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so a new project that you have to look forward to right here. This is gonna come up in the winter. This is a piece that I made for uh, Glass Patterns Quarterly last winter. And it's a winter kind of treescape. And I wanted to include this one because so much of the other pieces you saw are very bright and the, the contrasting colors and the shading is so obvious. This one is not so obvious because uh, I went with, you know, uh, muted winter tones where it's kind of cool and calm and cozy and not so vibrant. And, and outside you're more like cozy and settled in and, you know, uh, looking outside at the chilly weather but warm and snug inside instead. So let me bring this closer and show you that the shading on this, look at the beautiful shading. That's done with purple, with a pale purple. And the pale purple was just enough because of all the white. And the trees are like a, a purple color. And the little bit of dark detail on those trees is made with the, um, the outlining material, the um, glass line outlining medium. 
But look at that beautiful detail in that shading. I'm going to try to turn it so you get, try to get the glare off there for you. And look at that beautiful shading there and that depth that we're getting. And it's done with and the, the detail in the background there. And then up here near the top. Oh gosh, wouldn't you know? All right, hold on. Oh, good, it stopped. All right, boy, this is just a fiasco here. And uh, I hope it's worthwhile. I hope it's worth your while to uh, get the information in this crazy sort of way. You know, here I am out in my studio all alone. I'm a little bit of a crazy person, right? You know, uh, I live at the end of the street. And sometimes when I'm out here at night, which I love being out here at night, my lights are on and my, inside of my studio, as you can see, is happy yellow. And I sometimes, one time I like went to the street for some reason and I looked back and thought, oh my gosh, I'm the local mad scientist in the neighborhood, you know, because the, the studio looks like it's on fire or like it's lit up like a, you know, a blaze at night because of the yellow walls and all the lights I have going. So it's kind of fun to think that, oh man, you know, my creations are awesome, or I'm having so much fun, but also I'm probably like, you know, there she is again out in her studio getting carried away again, which is what Nikki always says. She always told me, she was a little, oh, mom, mom's getting carried away again. Well, here I am getting carried away again, but thanks for going along with me. Anyway, so let me get, so this one, great, great piece, right? And totally different from the others, but you can still see the importance of using colors that are in the tonal qualities and in, consistent with your design and your aesthetic and your, the ambiance and the mood you're trying to create in your artwork. So I hope that's helpful. All right, there's one more piece I want to show you, but I have to go grab it. So I'm going to, we'll be right back. Hey, so I decided to move the camera around because I had to climb up to get this one off a shelf. And uh, this one's kind of heavy. It's kind of big. This is called Fairy Tale Trail. And it's, um, it's designed based on a trail that I hiked behind my house that I absolutely love. And the trail doesn't look like this, but this is how I feel when I'm on the trail. But there's absolutely no black in this entire project. So this is in my Painting with Frit video. And all of these really dark shadows, right here, the dark shadows are created with amber. Here, these shadows are created by combining amber and purple. Here, the dark shadows are aventurine blue. I'm going to bring this closer so you can see those details. But there's absolutely not a speck of black in this entire piece. So what I was doing is taking the colors I'm already using within the art, repeating them in darker shades, and then if you don't have a darker shade, combine colors, layer them on top of each other, and you'll get darker colors. You know when you clean out the stuff in the grinder, you're thinking, oh, this would be great stuff to use on a piece of art, and then you try it and it looks like mud. Well, in this case, uh, mud is kind of what you want. You want those darker colors that are warmer and will um, soothing to the eye instead of you know, absorb the viewer's attention and suck them in like a black hole. So let me bring this closer for you. Here we go. All right, go bring it over here. And look at that detail. You see along the path there, that's amber and purple together to create that dark shadow and those beautiful lines on the, paper, on the trail there. And as I bring this down, you can see the shading in the trees. Oops, I'm gonna, I gotta move this over, there's something in the way here. All right, there we go. You can see the shading there in the trees and how that dark shadowing really draws the eye back, but it keeps your, also keeps your eye moving. So there we go. And look at the, the dark shadows along the path there underneath those flowers. That's all done with blue. Yeah, very cool, right? Yeah, I know, right? So just, um, you know, just another food for thought and how you can approach your pieces of art and make them richer, more exciting, and more fun to make. One more piece. Okay, I know I said one minute ago, but there's one more piece I want to show you. All right, this piece right here. Look, I had to check the time on my video. Okay, this piece right here. Uh, this is something you can look forward to in my premium video membership. This is coming out next week, or very close to next week. Um, and let me see if I can get it straight there. All right, there we go. And this, I used different shades of powdered frit to create details in the back, like a setting. And then I used powdered frit to detail that pumpkin. There we go. Kind of get that in the middle for you. And look how nice that turned out and how rich it is. And it just really adds to the overall ambiance of the piece. I'm going to try to get this close. There we go. Look at that. Ooh, isn't that fun? Gosh. 
you know, I am so, so fortunate that, um, you know, I get to be out here doing this with you during the day, and this is my job. This is my job. My gosh, I love it. Um, I love making up pieces of art. I love sharing it with you. I love sharing the process and the how-to and the and everything. I hope you enjoy um, seeing it. All right, I'm trying to get this so it looks beautiful in the picture there. Yeah, there we go. So, um, this is, all these tonal qualities are in keeping with this mood that I'm trying to create with this piece of art because it's seasonal. So, and this was kind of like a summer scene. This is kind of a fall scene. The, um, the fish was kind of, what well, was a water scene. So, instead of just going straight to, you know, a black or a white, what will um, be advantageous to your scene? What will benefit it? What will make it richer? So, don't necessarily go, you know, straight out to those, to those you know, easy fallback. Go to something that's a little more interesting, a little more exciting. And then your pieces have become a little more interesting and a lot more exciting. I hope you enjoyed that little kind of journey into the artist's mind of how to use color and shading to enrich in, if that's a word, um, enliven, I know that's a word, to um, exaggerate. And that's really what artists do is they take what is, you know, what it, the everyday and we exaggerate it to, to um, and we process it through our own artistic knowledge and our own artistic talent. We make something new and, and exciting and something that um, other people wouldn't see because we see it in our mind's eye and then we share it. So this is how you would push those aspects in your art to make them more exciting. So consider using, you know, you know consider uh, shaking up how you make shadows and also always consider creating some sort of light source and, and using shadows to make your pieces richer. Now to create a light source, imagine there's a light bulb on one side and shadow on the other side. So everything on this part of the art is lighter, everything on this part of the art is a little darker. Very easy to do, very simple, and really does add a nice effect. So I hope you enjoyed uh, you know, learning how to do some shadows or a little bit you know, insight into how I do it and, and what's going through my mind when I'm making a piece. And thanks for joining me. Um, please like, subscribe, follow, share. We would love for you to do all the above. And consider becoming a member in my video membership uh, program because we have great new stuff coming out all the time. And I've got a brand new video actually coming out. Uh, I've got two out this week and one coming out next week. We had a little lull there because everything was in production. And then I had a few unfortunate disasters. So that set me back a little bit. But you're going to see those disasters too. You're going to see those in video form. You'll get everything. So please consider becoming a member. We would love to have you and would really enjoy, you know, you're uh, enjoying these videos. So thanks for joining me today and uh, until next time, happy fusing.